Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Um, just going to keep it super informal. You guys were certainly ones that I wanted to um, have people just hear about your experience with the RBP, just based on, you know, personal interactions that I've had with you. And then, of course, Jennifer Suits interactions that you have talked about at various trade shows. So for anyone who will be watching this, I'll give a quick introduction for all of you questions, and then just have a couple questions. You can answer them round robin as you feel like, and then we'll be good to go. So first on the call, we have Kelly Tollison, broker owner of T-Square Property Management in Bothell, Washington, and of course, the NARPM National President for 2020. And then down here, we have Shannon Cornell, who is the broker owner of PMI Erica Realty Lakeland in Florida, and also a former Florida State um, president. So excited to see you next year. No, not, not president, me. just secretary. Okay. I thought you said one time. <laughs> well, no, just there, Shannon. That's still important. That's board president volunteer stuff book. right there. <laughs> right. President in my book. Um, and then we have Daniel Rothrock up here, who is the broker owner of Eaton Realty in Tampa. And of course, the incoming uh, Florida State president for 2022, I believe is what it is. You got it. Um, and then Jennifer Stoops, who is the VP at Pure Property Management in Charlotte, North Carolina. So stellar lineup of humans here. And then I'm Shannon with Second Nature. So uh, my first question for y'all, and again, you can kind of jump in if you feel compelled to answer it first, but, you know, all of you guys were kind of on the fence when first thinking about rolling out a benefits package. So what would be your advice to other property managers who are considering rolling one out? Uh, can I go first? Sure. I would say move fast and break things. Um, yeah, I, I, we were on the fence and we were kind of hesitant to the, you know, to the change, um, you know, mostly because of fear. Um, you know, anytime you, you implement change, it, there's, a, there's a perception, there's a reality that it may not go over real well. And for us, um, it didn't take long. I mean, you know, I'm the analytical one. I have to see it number wise. I have to think through A to Z. And so I put pen to paper and kind of ran through the pros and cons. I saw the benefit. I saw the huge benefit for the tenant. Um, obviously a huge benefit for our owners. And when I physically saw it in person, then I was like, okay, what are the steps I needed to take to actually get there? Uh, we rolled out our, you know, basically two or three month program and plan so that we could hit the ground running day one. And then it was really more about implementation. But um, yeah, advice, uh, move fast and break things. I have to almost agree with uh, Daniel is uh, we introduced it like March, well, February or March of 2020 uh, to the team. And I'm not sure, Shannon, if this was representative of what happens across the country, but my team did not absorb or did not receive it well. And I think my advice would be ha help your team adopt it as well as, uh, you know, like what Daniel said, running the numbers, making sure you're on board. But, and I don't think we tried to just shove it through. I thought it was a great idea and the team just was not on board and then COVID hit. So the timing ended up to be great. The other thing I would say, is, it, besides get your team on board or help, help your team understand the value of it is to, um, do it quickly because it's like ripping a band-aid off almost it doesn't it's not nearly as painful as it sounds or implementing it you know second nature has done a great job in evolving with the administration so there's really not a whole lot that comes out of your staff that your staff has to do to make it successful um and again all the things that daniel said it's it's a great program so i'm probably the newest one who has implemented it we just did it in June and, you know, looking at my numbers and yes, we probably should have done it a long time ago because we've been talking about it for years, you know, whatever. But now looking at the numbers and seeing that it's, you know, the actual income that's coming in from it versus what the owners are getting, the tenants are getting, like, I'm super impressed with it and wish we'd have done it before. So for us, if, you know, the, I knew all along it would be a good revenue provider. So that wasn't a concern, but to Daniel's point earlier, Kelly, you've sort of mirrored it. It's the implementation and the buy-in from your team because anytime you go to change anything, it could be you're using this type of paper towel today and tomorrow you have this kind and it's like, 
<laughs> the sky is falling. So um, what I did was once I knew that Second Nature was administering all of it, we had already done just the filters in general. So in theory, we had an RBP, but but it was a lot of things that we already had in place, our tenant portal, blah, blah, blah. You know, so it was a lot of wordsmithing and we had the filters, but we wanted to add these components. When I was initially looking at the four separate items, which filters we already had, so there were three others, we would have had to go administer all of those. So when I learned that Second Nature was willing to administer, I got all the details on it and then sat the team down and I was like, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. This is what it's going to look like. We don't have to go and administer it on our end. And that was a totally different ball game because they were like all in knowing that these things all come with this package. They don't have to do anything with it. So it was all upside for them. You know, too, as far as second nature administering it, Shannon, I know this isn't exactly what you asked, but not only do they administer it, but they give you a dedicated CSR. So you get a rep and you have a person and um, so it's not just the call center that you that they're pulling things automatically. There's a lot of software providers that we work with that you know supplement a lot of what we do. Our core, or you know, work with our core software, and they just do it automatically. This isn't that. This is a dedicated service per rep from Second Nature, making sure that your people are tagging things right, labeling things right, making sure the billing is going through right, that the charges are going through, and it's a, it's kind of a safety net kind of deal. I like having Sierra on our team because from Second Nature, because she makes sure that if somebody doesn't have the right tag, then they shouldn't be paying. And if they are paying, the tag should be on, and et cetera. So. Awesome. Well, y'all just segued nicely into my next question, which was about the team buy-in. So I know from working with the three of you on this call, some team members a little bit more hesitant to change understandably. Um, so how did you guys ultimately get that team buy-in? Because we understand you, you never want to like jam something down someone's throat because usually that ends up getting more pushback and just, you know, you get all those um, bottlenecks in the onboarding process. And then how do y'all's teams feel about it now? And I'll start with you, Kelly. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, ours was probably, our, our team was pretty tough on you and Tiffany. Uh, back a year and a half ago. Great. What's that? They were tough and it was a great learning experience because we need people to be tough on us so that we can pivot and make things better and listen to what people are having. Yeah, I like to think that was a good thing, but at the time it was pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> um, but so what we did is we, we, I kind of, because of COVID, I put it on the back burner because there were so many other things coming at us that we just decided that we'd, we'd focus on those things. And you guys, you and Tiffany were great. Um, and then once we decided to do it, I actually worked with you guys, worked with Shannon, with you and Tiffany, and we kind of set out the whole plan and then we did a launch thing. So uh, Second Nature sent out coffee mugs and a couple of other things for the team and we had an intentional launch, kind of a party, virtual launch party, and kind of told them that, hey, this is how it's going to be but it's gonna be super easy for you. All you need to do is put a tag here, a tag there. And our team bought into it. And what's been really cool is there there has been, I think out in the last, I don't know, four or five months that we've been on the program, we've had maybe one tenant say they didn't wanna do it. I know, and, and we, that was the initial thing. I think our team thought, oh, tenants will never want this, but they just don't even think twice about it. They may ask about it, but you know, we had the marketing flyer, we had all of their um, all of their pushback questions and all of their, uh, n you know, the things they were hesitant about addressed. And that was that was par part of it is that it's not going to cause them more work. It's not going to cause them more difficulty leasing. It, it could enhance the leasing depending on how they looked at it and how they presented it. So, yeah. Kelly, I'm going to weigh in on yours for a second, too, because your team probably out of any of the three of us had potentially more concerns because the way that the laws and things are in your neck of the woods where you manage, it makes things a heck of a lot more difficult to go implement things that are, you know, you know, where it could be a tenant fee or an owner fee and things like that. So that speaks volumes just because I think for us, you know, Shannon and, and Daniel, you're both in Florida. 
you know, I'm on the, you know, in, in North Carolina. So it's much easier for us to go institute things like this from the tenant perspective. So imagine for you guys, just, you know, your team thinking, oh my gosh, the tenants are going to be all bent out of shape. And, you know, and so, yeah, that probably for, for me, it's always about the administration of things that they fuss about. Yeah. Whereas for you, it's probably a little bit less in admi administration and how many angry phone calls am I going to get? Well, that, and, and just how difficult are we going to, uh, are we going to be putting up an obstacle for leasing? Right. right, right. And, and we found that it isn't an obstacle. And, um, you know, I don't know, I'm pretty sure it would be, you know, looking at the competition, not just other NARPA members in the area, but just multifamily and all they offer and all they require and all they make you pay for that really we're, I think we're not, we're still very competitive in the marketplace as to what we're offering and the cost that we're offering it, you know, to the tenants. To get those yeah. benefits. I think single family, we're still behind the eight ball relative to multifamily. In, a little in, bit and the fees know. and things. Yeah, I don't yeah. disagree with you. Yeah. Although I think we're a little bit off base on the security deposits, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> Panel for another time. Yes. <laughs> Dan and Daniel, anything that you guys want to add? I know I, I came down and spoke to you guys in person um, for your team, Shannon. Yeah, you got you got my my team to buy in. You know, when I first brought it to them, um, it was the same thing. They didn't see how we were going to be able to sell it. It didn't make any sense to them. Sarah, being one of our tenants, was like, "Do I want this? Would I want this as a tenant?" You know, trying to put herself in the shoes of all of our tenants, and um, we've had very little pushback on it. Very little, where I thought that we would have a lot more. Music to my ears. Love it. <laughs> well, and it's funny, Shannon, because you've, you've always said, you know, you'll be surprised at how many, how much, li how little pushback there is. And we're, and I think all of us on the call today are like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There's a reason I drafted you guys for the panel, because it was a real world experience. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say my team is... Uh, they probably somewhat expect for me to bring a level of change. You know, I, I, I'm constantly changing and always reevaluating where we are and just trying to constantly cinch up, you know, our protocol, our processes, our procedures and doing better, you know, every year. I spend a lot of time in the fall just doing an audit process of where we are and what did we learn in the last 12 months? What worked, what didn't work? You know, we're coming out of the busiest summer I've experienced in a very long time, if, if not ever. And it taught me a lot. I, I found some, some issues with our processes that I wouldn't have otherwise uh, learned had I not been stretched completely thin. Um, and so for me with, you know, getting the, the buy-in from the team, you know, it didn't take much for me because again, we're so automated. We're so procedural and task driven that uh, all I had to do was amend a few emails, amend a few things, and it, they didn't really skip a beat as far as our the processes go. So similar to what some of you others were saying, you know, the change was was very minimal impact on them. So the buy in was pretty easy. Uh, and if I remember correctly, we also had them sit in on some of the brainstorming sessions to understand what value add we wanted to give back to the tenants to get their input and their critical thinking skills um, during that ideation phase of, okay, what, what should this look like? In your opinion, you're going to have to answer some of these tough questions. What are you prepared for? And how can I go ahead and preemptively overcome some of the objections we're, we're anticipating? So it didn't take much though. Love to hear that across the board. Um, so my next question, kind of talking into how, you know, resident benefit packages have become such a trend. How do you guys see the benefits package evolving and then kind of changing within the scope of property management as we continue through 2021 and go into 2022? And given that you guys just rolled this out, I haven't quite thought that far ahead. <laughs> um, so one of the things I know that when we when we started, um, I don't think that the credit reporting was in our program, and I I know we want to get that, and so I think that I think is awesome that you guys have added that. Um, I haven't really come up with anything, uh, you know, that I haven't given it much thought either. That's that credit reporting. I think that's going to put us over the edge for, we started out just doing uh, new leases and I want to implement it with renewals here probably in the next month or two. 
Um, and I'd like to be able to offer that credit reporting thing. So I think that is um, something that we want to be looking at. Well, there was also, um, and, and I know maybe this, I don't know if everybody's got the same thing, but the, um, oh, what was it? The identity theft was in the package that I've got as well. But I thought that was a great value add to the tenants, having that li having that identity theft protection as well. And that's why I wanted to make sure that that was part of our package as well. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. And, and that's helping with the buy-in from the, from the residents as well. Yeah, and so for us, we actually, because we we were relatively newish adopters. So Shannon, we you know, I mean, we uh, we rolled out filters years ago, um, mm -hmm. but just this year we did the the RBP package. Um, so we've got the utility concierge, we do have the credit reporting, we do have the um, the protection, and then we have the pinata program. Which look, anytime you can roll something out to make a resident experience better, and um, the owner doesn't have to pay for it. That's a win on both sides because mm -hmm. the client is happy and they're not having to pay for it. And we've actually had some clients, ours is mandatory. It's not, it's not optional. So everybody's automatically rolled in. Um, and we did roll it out, Kelly, during renewals. Um, yeah. So, and, and we've had no, very similar to what you all are saying. I think we might've had one or two. We're not going to let a renewal not happen because of it, but we've gone to those owners and said, hey, this is what we offer. This is how it works. And those owners have decided to pay for it at least during this resident until their new one comes in and then it'll be something they're accustomed to because right. when they moved in, it was already like that. So um, so I, I just think as those were all services, we were actually, ironically, I'd already had conversations with Pinata to talk about their affinity program. And I'd already had conversations with you know yeah. CHS to, to talk about utility concierge. Um, we hadn't gotten as far as credit reporting, but it was on our radar. How do we go do about, you know, go about doing that? So, um, you know, it, it just, it, the, the fact that all of those things are combined with little effort from our team, our clients are happy that we offer it. Residents are happy to have it. It's a win all the way around. That is a triple win. I've learned that from second nature. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on a lot of panels with you guys this year so far. Everybody uses that. So now I'm like, it's a triple win. <laughs> the cat scream is over here. Right. Uh, you know, I believe I heard you all kind of mention how, you know, single family property management might be a little bit more behind like the apartment complexes when it comes to the idea of a benefit package and offering things like that. So do you think that, you know, as this year continues on and, you know, as we go into next year, this is something that single family property managers should adopt. So that way they can kind of compete with all of these multifamily and apartment complexes in terms of providing that value. Yeah, beyond even just competing, it's just a good service yeah. to provide for both sides. You know, you you manage for the owner, but you have an obligation to the tenants too. And it's it's just a good service to provide, and it's it's a win because it's a benefit to your business, even if it's cost neutral, which for most of us it's not. But even if it were, it still keeps clients happy with you longer. So, it, you know, retention is a sale. That's what I tell our team all the time. I'm like. You have to just, you know, one thing goes wrong and that's immediately a red flag. We call those owners that have to go on our watch list. You know, something goes amiss. That's an avenue for them to start considering terminating with you. And yeah. so the more you can do to develop that relationship and show them your value outside, because we all do the same stuff, right? And, and at the end of the day, it's, for me, it's probably less about the competition and more about the value that it brings to the firm from a revenue perspective. But, but to both the client and to the resident as well, keeping both sides of that happy. I'm always thinking about what, what's next. And for me, um, being in Florida, if you've ever lived in Florida, you know that you deal with tons of bugs. So pest control is actually something that I may start um, rolling into a new payment platform, you know, commingle, bundle it up in our current RBP, but obviously pick a deadline. And from that day forward, all all new leases, all new renewals um, are at a separate rate, but it also comes with pest control because, um, you know, for us, we put that onus back onto the tenant, but it's something that we, high, we we know is going to occur at least, you know, multiple times during their tenancy. Bugs get into the homes, rainy season, they're all trying to escape, you know, the water, um, but it, it's a huge benefit for the owner. It's a benefit for us. Uh, and obviously, when you when you take that um, offer to a provider, you can you can save as well because of the volume aspect. So um, 
you know, that's that's one key aspect that I'm looking at specifically in my portfolio of, of something. What's the next um, bolt on, uh, you know, little package to add to the RBP? That's a really good point. That's a great point. Yeah. So last question for you guys, because we're coming up on time here. But, you know, what's been the biggest impact thus far that a benefits package has had in y'all's businesses? <laughs> I think for us, it's been the profitability. And I, I'm looking forward to when we do have it 100% rolled out, uh, looking at that that hit to the bottom line. I think, um, I, you know, all of the things that we've talked about here today, you know, we're in business to make a profit and that's why we do it. Yeah, we can add services here and there and we can add things that add value to what we do. But for me and our company, I think it's the profitability. I would agree yeah. with you, Kelly. Well, all of it's been great. It's it, it was a huge revenue generator for yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I'll third that, but I also want to call out something because obviously anyone who's watching this, I don't want people to think we're greedy and, and we're just obviously That's... taking this uh, as a profit and not doing anything with it. Uh, more importantly, I want people to understand a, you know, our expenses have gone up tenfold in the last five years. You know, insurance is more than doubled. And we've not, you know, we've not done um, maybe a good job passing that off to the owners. Uh, maybe we are to blame for some of that, but this is a way for us to make up for that. Uh, you know, I was obviously afraid, well, what are the owners going to think? They're going to see obviously, you know, money coming into us and why we deserve it. But not one owner really argued the fact, but I was prepared because, you know, the truth is our expenses have gone up tremendously and we've not increased their fees one, one single penny. Yeah. So we're able to di diversify basically our income stream, not affect their, their um, you know, what their costs are, spread it across many uh, tenants, which is a small impact to them uh, on a, you know, one to many relationship. And like you said, we're, we're now profitable. And then you, you can really start thinking about creative ideas and really reinvesting some of that profit into other ways uh, to either market your business uh, tenant relations, uh, you know, better software, getting real deep into APIs and development, which is all very expensive, but yeah. you've just opened yourself up to a ton of resources with that you can work that profit into your business now. So just want to call that out because, you know, I know it's sensitive when people start talking about their money. Um, yes, it's profitable, but I, you know, what I'm doing with it is reinvesting it into the company to make us better uh, and to, you know, pour back into both the tenants and the landlords at the same time. Well, and I think that's why Shannon has us on the call, because we all do that. We reinvest back into our companies. Yep. We reinvest back, but without that profitability, and I totally agree with you, Daniel, it's a tough subject. I wouldn't necessarily, you know, be on a tenant podcast and say, oh, we love the profitability. But right. But it is, it's something that we do, we do the same as you. We reinvest it back either in, in personnel by, by, re, by doing retention programs with our HR or by, um, you know, offering more efficiencies so that we can be better at what we do, um, all that stuff. But yeah, I agree. It's, and I just want to stress that, again, it may not be a popular concept, but we are not in the nonprofit business. Right. We are not in non, we, we are here to make a profit. And as you said, Daniel, our expenses have gone up. Our fees have nece not necessarily gone up, but there, we need to diversify the income somewhere. Yep. So the it's, RBP is like, a, it's great, a triple win. <laughs> it is a triple win. It's also a great business development tool because when you share with homeowners, the things that you offer residents, yeah. it's that's, that's a, you know, that's a great selling point as to why they would want to do business with you because you care about their resident experience, right? Maybe that's a quadruple house, win. There you go. <laughs> vacant house doesn't make them money, right? So they want it rented and they want someone to stay for a while. And so yeah. the better you can, you know, the better the experience for the resident, the better opportunity you have to retain them for a longer period of time. So it's a yeah. great selling tool for business development. Yeah. And to all y'all's credit, you know, one of the things that I loved about working with each of you is you are very intentional about putting things in your benefits package that actually brought value. You know, there's a little bit of a conversation with some of our clients about, you know, the fluff part of the benefits packages. Um, but I know you, Daniel, in particular, when we talked, you're like, nope, I've got these five things. They're going to provide this value to my company and we're going to rock and roll with that. And so 
that's something that I know all of you guys have done. So I did want to give y'all credit there that, you know, you guys weren't people who were just like, oh, you know what, we'll, we'll put a bunch of fluff in the package and it's not actually going to provide that value to the tenant. So, um, good job. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. Well, that's it. That was my last question. So if you guys have any last remaining comments, you know, that you would like to shout out to any property managers who, again, are thinking of rolling out a benefits package or um, who may not even know what they are sort of thing. But, you know, other than that, I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time today and I will see at least two of you. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> and I would suggest I'm sure any one of us on the call would be more than happy to talk to any of your uh, the people you're working with, Shannon, or any of your other teammates are working with to uh, walk them through how we did it, you know, more in detail questions and answers. So absolutely. And I really appreciate that as well. Well, thank you guys so much and have a great rest of your day.